Yeah. I think it's huge. I think it's always been part of the calendar up here. It's always been an event which you, you know, look to to see who's potentially going to do well at Wimbledon as well. So I think that, you know, and particularly this year where you've obviously got a week extra gap between the French Open and, and Wimbledon, I think it's been great for Birmingham because obviously a lot of the top players have been trying to manage their energy from Paris heading to Wimbledon and trying to get themselves ready for that tournament. But with an extra week, you know, they've got time to get here, play a tournament um, of the calibre of Birmingham and, and go on and obviously have another week before Wimbledon so it's got a strong draw it's always had a reasonably strong draw but it's even better this time around and perfectly placed as well the keeping in Birmingham are there any you know big names coming up through Birmingham anyone to look out for well, obviously, you, had, uh, you know, Dan Evans, obviously, on the ten on the men's side of things, you know, has sort of had, you know, some good success and not, not so much recently, but hopefully he can get it back. He's obviously playing on the grass. So, you know, he's he's obviously been the one person that obviously I, I'm, I'm aware of from around here. But it is tra tennis traditionally, you know, has, has been a pretty good sport up here. My my mother-in-law coaches at Warwick Boat Club, um, has done for, for many years. I mean, that's, I spent a lot of time around here. Jeremy Bates used to come from here. So, you know, there's, there's definitely some history here and, and uh, hopefully, you know, looking at some of these kids here, they've got a bit of natural talent. If you can keep them in the game long enough, you never know, you may get another one coming through. Um, and, you know, I've got to ask you a bit about Murray. Um, you know, you were with him right from the start. You, how have you seen his career progress? Um, yeah, I mean, it's been an incredible career. You know, I, I saw him at 16, actually, for the first time up in Scotland before I even coached him, uh, about 18 months before that. You know, and he was always a genuine talent, um, always felt, you know, that he was going to do something special in the game. Um, and obviously he has done, you know, winning Wimbledon and obviously winning the US Open and the Olympics. I, he's in a very tough era. And I think that had he been in a, in a different era, he probably would have already had five or six Grand Slams to his name. But I think looking at him this season and where his tennis is back to after, to the back problem that he's had, I wouldn't be surprised to see him winning Wimbledon for a, for a second time in a few weeks. Yeah, so obviously Wimbledon in a few weeks, you know, how do you think he'll be feeling going into that? I mean, it would be great for him to win again, wouldn't it? it? It would be fantastic for him again as well, because, you know, I think, you know, 2014 was a tough, tough year for him on a number of levels, you know, changed coaches and obviously had to get through the back problems and maybe nobody really understood just how difficult that was for him and how it was hampering his, his tennis at the time. I think that what we have seen in the clay court season is that he's fully fit again and, and obviously heading into Wimbledon, you know, a, a tournament where he is a strong favourite heading into he may not be the favourite, you know, Novak, even though he lost at the final French, is probably still in many people's eyes the favourite heading into it. But, uh, you know, I think from Andy's point of view, mentally, he's back in a place where he feels that he can win Grand Slams. And that obviously happened in Melbourne at the start of the year and, and, and particularly happened on the clay at Roland Garros.